This video will deal with the topic of Brexit. Once again, I'm French, I have a French accent, I'm teaching legal English, I'm making mistakes when I speak English. But the main point of this video is to give you the main ideas that you can develop during your oral exam, if the topic of the exam is the Brexit. You will hear me speaking English and what you need to realize is that it doesn't matter if you have a French accent, it doesn't matter if some of the words I said in a French way, it doesn't completely matter if you make some mistakes, it will happen for sure. I'm living in an English speaking country, I'm not only but partly, I'm working and speaking in English every day, I still make a lot of mistakes, maybe too much, especially when I'm stressed, like doing a video for you. So the idea is just to help you have the vocabulary in English and be able to use some of the hints I will give you. What to say about the Brexit? Normally, you know everything about the Brexit. You are supposed to have all the information. So here is just a summary. The Brexit is Britain exit. These words mean that the, uh, the United Kingdom sorry, is leaving the European Union. Actually, we can already say that the United Kingdom left the European Union because it happened at the beginning of this year, 2020. What does it mean for the European Union? The Union is back to 27 members. It questions a lot of things. First, the place of the UK in the world. UK, as you might know, is a part of the Commonwealth also. So maybe UK will be will have even more link with the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth is an international organization which was created after the death of the British Empire and it gathers only speaking English speaking countries and mainly countries which used to be in the British Empire. So the Commonwealth is already um, an organization in which the UK has a strong position, of course, but this organization might have more strength on the global world, uh, knows that the UK is not anymore a part of the European Union. At least it's a question we can raise, or at least the UK might be more involved into economics, into collaborating with these countries than it used to be in the past because of the European Union. At the same time, we question the place of the European Union in the world. Will the European Union still be close to English speaking countries? Will, for example, India, the US, Australia, Canada have more links with the UK or with the EU? Or will they have links with both? It's completely changed the face of the global world. It's not only a matter between UK and EU, it goes further than that. What are the problems? There are a lot of problems, lots of them. The first is Ireland, or actually Ireland, with, because there's the north of Ireland and south of Ireland. And the border, this is a big problem. It has been a big problem for centuries in the past. It's and finally, the peace arrived last century. And no, with this conflict, it's not sure how the relation will be between the two countries and also how it will be with a new border between them. Other question, Gibraltar. Gibraltar is, um, is a, it's, there's a fight <coughs> sorry, about Gibraltar between UK and Spain. Inside the European Union, it has been problematic regularly, but they found kind of a peace. We don't know how it's going to be after. Also, as a topic, the future of the European law. Will the UK completely erase all the laws, the rules coming from the EU that they used to apply? Will they change them for new ones? Uh, will there still be rules that still apply in the UK? We don't know exactly yet. We don't have an agreement yet, or full agreement yet, so we don't know for everything. EU and UK relation, of course, of course, that's the main topic. What will be in the future? What will be the future of the relations between UK 
and the European Union. Will there be an economic agreement? What will happen with the free movement? The free movement of workers, of money, the free movement of people, etc. The fishing uh, quotas have been a big problem. We will discuss that also later. What happened with the treaties which have been signed by the European Union, including the UK? We can think of all the treaties of the Hague Conference of Private International Law, for example. What will happen? What will happen with the agriculture? We know that the European Union is supporting a lot of agriculture, including the agriculture which was in the UK. So what will happen? How will it work uh, in that respect? Big question also the situation of the expats. How does it work for people who are nationals of a European country? I, I wrote EU nationals, but basically it's more nationals of a country which belongs to the EU and nationals from the UK living uh, in the EU. So that's questions which are not completely solved. What will happen? Do they need a visa? How? Um, it's fine. What requirements will they need to change country, etc., etc., to settle in one country, to create a company, etc. Erasmus is also a big problem. What will happen with students who used to go via the Erasmus program to the UK? Do we need a new program? Can we extend the Erasmus program? The finance. UK was paying a lot of money to the European Union and getting a lot of money in compensation. What is the final bill that UK has to pay? Of course, there's disagreement. The European Union thinks that UK has to pay more than what UK wants to pay. It makes sense. The criminal policy or the what are the how are we gonna manage where well, there was agreements at the European level? What will happen? No. The defense, Alors, the criminal policy and the defense, there's two topics which are really important, including the financial aspect, especially at a moment where we have lots of terrorism and where there was, um, or where states in the European Union managed to help each other, what will happen with the UK, and UK was threatened in the past years, also by terrorism. Will the EU help UK? How? In which circumstances? Etc. The defense, it's more a question about the budget also. Uh, how will we have an agreement in case of a war? Will we have an agreement about which, um, between the military of the several countries of the EU and of the UK? The European Court of Justice, it's also a big question. Of course, the UK is living, so you can think of as a European Court. Uh, we don't care for the UK, it doesn't uh, exist anymore, so there's no question. But actually, all the agreements that the EU might sign with UK will be submitted at one point to the European Union. So the European Union, what will be the value of the text, of the decision the court might render if the UK doesn't recognize them? So we need to find a solution also for that. These are some of the problems, main, the main ones, but there's probably thousands of others that are not in this list. If you have a topic about the, uh, the Brexit, you can always pick up one of these problems to discuss it. A chronology of the Brexit. The idea is just to keep a few dates so that you remember some of the steps that led to the, the exit, to the departure of the UK. The first step, the first step or the main step was the referendum in 2016. Why did I say first or main? First is that it's the first formal step. It's where the, you, the people from UK, British people, 72% of the voters, decided at 51.9% to leave the European Union. It is the first formal step, but at the same time, we have to say that UK was not a member at the creation of the EU and more than that, there were always there have always been problems between the UK and the EU. The EU always had to um, accommodate the UK, to change a bit the rules for the UK, so it has always been a relationship with lots of conflicts. But the formal first step is the referendum. The deadline at the time was the 29th of March 
19. Because they didn't reach any agreement, it was postponed to 31 of January 2020 at midnight. And it happened, the 31 of January, the UK left the EU. Second step, 23 of July 2019, Boris Johnson becomes Prime Minister. I should have said BK because it's in the past. He became Prime Minister. This is a very, and Prime Minister, I should have put capital letters, sorry. Uh, it's a very important point because before um, it was Theresa May, and Theresa May was also in favor of the Brexit, but Boris Johnson is has a way stronger point of view of the Brexit. Is even more Brexiter than was Theresa May. Theresa May didn't manage to get an agreement with the EU, so she decided to resign, and Boris Johnson became Prime Minister. There was lots of tension, and they're still in the UK because of the Brexit. Due to this tension, and due to the fact that he was not able to get an agreement from the Parliament to leave the European Union, Boris Johnson decided that there will be general elections. There were general elections last December, the 12th of December 2019, and Boris Johnson political party, the Conservative Party, won the election. Started from that, he had a strong support from his country to leave the European Union in the condition he wants. 31 of January 2020 or 1st of February, it depends, it was at midnight, it depends which day you, you count, the UK left the European Union. 2020 was a whole year of negotiation. The main point of this year was negotiating, negotiating, negotiating. And the result is not that good for no. September 2020, UK violates the agreement, violated, I should have put in the past, sorry for the mistake, I told you there would be mistakes. So, uh, UK violated the agreement, they agreed with the EU in January. They adopted a new law which violated especially the part concerning Ireland. So the EU, of course, uh, disagree with this violation and started a procedure against the UK. We have to take into account the fact that if UK said that if there's no agreement by October 2020, they will leave without any agreement. The transitional period is until the 31 of December. So it's a very important uh, discussion and negotiation. What are the main problems today? Today is to know if UK will leave the, or UK already left, but if there will be an agreement between, be, during, pardon, this transitional period. They are not able to conclude an agreement for no. They haven't been able to find a solution. They haven't been able to reach an agreement. But today, we don't know, we still don't know if it will be a no deal Brexit or if it will be a Brexit with an agreement. What are the points of disagreement? What are the disagreements? The Irish border is one of the most important ones because the UK did not respect the agreement signed in January by adopting a new law. By adopting a new law. The fish quota are still uh, quite a big problem also because they disagree on that. A also, the fair competition between EU and the UK is also a problem. And you imagine that the coronavirus crisis with the economical crisis makes it even more complicated to reach an agreement on an economical points. Note that the, the election in the US might have a strong impact also. If Trump wins, the UK have a strong link with the US and with Trump. And in that case, it will strengthen the, the relationship between UK and US. Trump is in favor of the Brexit and is supporting uh, Johnson a lot. So in that case, UK has a strong ally outside of the EU and there will probably be an important agreement. So 
in the, for, between them an economical agreement so UK will have support that will able enable UK to say okay we are living without an agreement we want a no-deal Brexit but if Biden wins if Joe Biden wins in that case the UK doesn't have this strong ally in the US because the US will probably become closer to the EU more than to the UK. Biden is very upset by the position of the UK concerning the Irish border because Biden's family comes from Ireland also. So it's not exactly clear what is going to happen, but for sure we have the feeling that today Johnson is waiting for the result of the election in the US to decide if he leaves the negotiation table without an agreement or if he will make more effort, if the UK will make some efforts to reach an agreement. Here are some of the points. Here are some of the points you can discuss if you have a topic concerning the Brexit. Do not hesitate to send me questions if you have some. Of course, it's not complete. The idea is to give you some of the ideas. You are supposed to already know the chronology chronology and to have a lot of idea about the Brexit. But the idea is more to help you and to give you some hints on that topic. Good luck.